Hey everybody, welcome to Benched. I'm your host Jeff, my co-host Nick. Hey, hey. And on this show, we will be talking about anything and everything sports, whether it be NBA, NHL, NFL, PGA, and everything in between, right? So we had a really wild wild card weekend this this past weekend, didn't we, Nick? Oh my god. A uh, couple of couple of interesting games. I mean, I think everybody who was supposed to win won for the most part. I don't think there were any big upsets, so to say. I mean, maybe the Browns, the Brown Steelers. That I had a... personally, I had the Browns winning, but I had the Seahawks winning this weekend. Really? Yeah, you had I the Seahawks. I went with the Seahawks. I really did go with the Seahawks. I did, okay. but I okay. ever the Seahawks was the only game I got wrong. So I mean, you know, if there's I'll two things it. I can guarantee. If there's two things I can guarantee almost every NFL season, it's that the Cowboys won't make the playoffs and the Seahawks will choke at some point in the playoffs. True. Those I've... are almost those the, those are almost two guarantees that have come to uh, fruition yeah. almost regularly now. I I'm you know, I'm starting to fall into that one too. I mean, not with the whole Cowboys thing, but the Seahawks thing, you know. And uh so yeah, I mean, what? We had the Bills playing the Colts what Bills Saturday? Play the Colts. That was, a, that, was, that was a close game. That was a lot closer than I thought it was going to be, actually. I mean, the Josh Bills... Josh Allen looked good, though. He really did. I, I like how he's throwing the ball. I wish they would kind of get the run game a little bit more underneath mm-hmm. them. You know, mm-hmm. I feel like they're... I feel like they try and force the run game in there, and then when it doesn't work, then they go back to the pass. Now, do you think that's a credit to the Colts' defense, though? Yeah, the I Colts do. Colts have a pretty... The Colts have a pretty good line, I believe, and it's hard to run against them. And I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah, I I don't know. I I, I do agree, though. I think the Bills, I mean, I feel like if you're going to be a playoff contending team and go far in the postseason, you have to be able to run the football. And, you know, if you're having trouble running it in the wild card weekend against, uh, you know, what were they, 10 and 6, 11 and 5 Colts team? I mean, they were a solid team. They were were a pretty solid team, yeah. You, I mean, you, you should be able to get over. I mean, did they even get over 100 yards rushing? Who the Bills? The Bills. I think, yeah. I think combined, I think they might have been close to 100 yards rushing. Okay. But I mean, like you said though, Leonard, they have Leonard. They have, um, you know, that defensive line is really good. So it, it was. I this was probably the game of the week for me was the Colts Bills. I thought this was going to be the closest one because. The defenses on both teams were hmm. really good throughout the whole season, and I knew it was going to be a tough matchup. So you thought the Colts-Bills was going to be the closest game? Yeah. Really? Okay. Yeah, okay. yeah. I mean, okay. I, had, I had the Ravens winning as well. I, that one I thought was going to be a close game as well. Really? You really had the Ravens? You Okay. Okay. Because, um, I mean, I, I feel like a lot of people were against the Ravens. Really? Yeah, no, I picked I the mean, Ravens. You know, not not so to say against the Ravens. Like I feel like they had you know that back pocket chance of like yeah the Ravens you know on paper right. should be able to pull it off per se, but they already lost to the Titans once this season. We know right. what happened last season in the playoffs. We know Lamar's history in the playoffs coming into the game this past weekend. Um, you know, did I think I'm, there was I'm just a surprise? You 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 picked. I I thought you would have picked Tennessee. But no, I, as much as I love Derrick Henry. Mm-hmm. I did pick the Ravens to win that game. Okay. So, you know. I mean, it's it's funny. I mean, I heard all this talk coming in about Derrick Henry, you know, and, you know, running. Oh, my God. he's. A B- I mean, we made him look like Derrick Halfyard Henry because I think that's all he was, like, averaging. You yeah, know? I, I don't know. I think he had. I mean, <clears throat> the, the one thing I noticed, and I full credit to the Ravens defense and their defensive coaching staff and all that, because they were tackling so well that right. entire game. He was not, he wasn't, cause I think he's used to, you know, being able to just bounce off defenders and just kind of, you know, yeah, I saw him over. They were wrapping up, they were taking his feet, tripping him up. You know, they, they really brought him down. He I saw a lot have... of gang tackling too. You know, it yeah. wasn't, it wasn't yeah. actual like one-on-one all the time. You know, it was multiple guys getting to Derrick Henry and I could see that he was getting a little frustrated. There was that whole thing with him and uh, the coach on the that. sidelines, you know. Him and so, Vrabel, yeah. Him and Vrabel's Vrabel. trying to calm yeah. him down because he's yep. like, coach, coach, I want to run. Yeah. He's like, I'm trying, son. Yeah, right. The Ravens are just too good. But, you know, but the other. The Ravens, my team, the Ravens, and me being a Baltimore native, you know, I'm, I'm Baltimore bred. So uh, Ravens, my hometown team. Um, we get to travel to Buffalo this week. 
Are you guys ready to play? Are you guys ready to play against Buffalo? That game's what? I think we are. That game is Saturday. What? Saturday. Three fifteen or eight fifteen. Saturday night, eight fifteen. Saturday night game, eight fifteen in Buffalo. It's gonna be cold. Game. Now you, I mean, but you guys aren't. You guys are accustomed to playing in cold games. I mean, you know, you guys, it's pretty cold there in Baltimore, yeah. right? I mean, yeah, yeah, it's it's cold you know, in Baltimore. It's definitely is it as cold as it is in Buffalo? But I mean, it's not. It's not. It's not as cold as it is in it, Buffalo. But, it's not um, like the. It's not like the Rams having to go up to Lambeau, right? You know, where they're playing indoors in a in a nice it, controlled it, climate it, stadium you exactly know? it's not it's not like the saints having to go yeah exactly yeah like to minnesota or something right it's, it's not anything oh no minnesota is a dome now don't they yeah. uh i think so yeah i think they do damn so bad but yeah Oof. la yeah yeah that's yeah, okay yeah la but la la going to green bay, going going to green bay. yeah la going to green bay this weekend as well yeah that's again, uh the Ravens, but you know i i don't know i just feel like lamar and cole are in a good combo i mean getting getting hit his his type of football right getting physical like that and getting hit in that cold weather that pays a toll I feel it really like does it really does when you're in the loose summer you know it's not like we play in humid florida weather but you right. know it's i mean i'm from southern california so it's, yeah i mean it's a lot different playing in buffalo at you know nine o'clock at night when it's nine degrees yeah and you get hit I mean, even catching the ball, you know, hurts, you yeah, know? Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's, so, a, that's a different kind of hurt, too. Yeah. That's so, like I mean, bone we'll rattling. Perform, though, but I'm, I'm definitely, so who are you, who are you taking? And I guess that'll be our first pick since we've kind of covered the Bills and the Colts game and then the Ravens and the Titans. Um, um, so it's Ravens versus Bills, Saturday, right. 8.30 in Buffalo. Who are you taking? I have the bills. I'm taking the bills no, in bills. Buffalo at home. He's I'm sorry. I'm I'm jumping on the bills bandwagon. I'm part of the bills mafia right now. That is my team. Out of the, I, I'm taking the bills. That is my team for this weekend. The bills. All right. Yeah. All right. Are you going to be so have? brave to throw out a score? Do you want to, do you want to take a stab at a score? Ooh. Cause, cause, cause okay, here's what I'll do. I'll give you one game. Okay. One game you can guess the score on. And we'll see okay. how it pans out for you. What do you? What game do you want to guess the score on? This one, or do you want to wait till and we wait to see? Do you, you know what? To guess the score on this. Let, I'm going to guess the score. I'm going to guess the score. I'm going to guess the score. I think it's going to okay. be twenty four seventeen Bills. Twenty four seventeen. Twenty four seventeen. Well, I'm going to pick the Ravens, obviously. Of course. Uh, not going to pick the score. I'm going to pick okay. this. I'm going to give my score prediction for another game that we'll discuss in a minute here, but uh. Yeah, I'm taking the Ravens. Should be a pretty, I, I don't want to say too one-sided affair, but I feel like the Ravens match up well against this Buffalo team. Right. Um, you're going you're to see classic, classic Ravens football. A lot of runs, a lot of short little tight end, running back, you know, uh, bootleg type option types. Just right. a lot of old school football. Um, Ravens, Ravens. Ravens? Ravens. Ravens. Okay. Ravens. So now, what other games that we have? We had, I mean, I, I, how, how this next game I'm about to say was even a playoff game. I, I, I'm yet to know, and it was a Saturday night like prime time game. Yep, yep. The Buccaneers at Washington. Washington was the home team too. And they were what you're, six you're and a, ten, six and ten, home team seven six and, and ten, seven and nine, I seven and nine. Seven I, yeah, they were seven and, seven nine. and nine. That's right. Seven That's right. Nine. Seven and nine. <clears throat> seven and nine. Ah oh, man. You know, truthfully, I mean, I thought it was going to be a blowout game. I really did. I thought Tampa Bay was going to just go in there and they were going to win by 40 points, mm -hmm. right? But, uh, of course, we didn't get that. We got an actual closer game than anyone expected, right? Washington's defense kind of came to play. And then the quarterback that they put in was Heineke. Mm -hmm. And... I mean, Alex Smith was still injured. I mean, Alex Smith had an injured I'm calf. He was seriously injured too, because you yeah. know he would have played if he could. If there was any right. chance that he could have played, he would have played. Yeah, I mean, I did see images of the week before the, or so where I mean he had like blood going through his sock and stuff. I mean, I saw that during the game. You know, yeah, during the game, game you know. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. at one at some point in time, you got to start considering, you know, taking into the, into consideration your health, right? So. But I think if he was able to play, I think he would have played. But yeah, yeah, truthfully, yeah. I was very impressed with Heineke. But, I, 
I, I was really impressed with him. Yeah, no, I think I think he had a solid game. Um, you know, was this his first? This was was this his first NFL start? Yeah, and they chose to do it in a playoff. First NFL start, huh? huh. Yeah, first NFL start was a was a playoff. And yeah, so... I mean, he 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 was definitely balling. I mean, going up against uh, you know Tom Brady, Gronk, Antonio Brown. I mean, you know Mike Evans. It's not like you're going up against a right crazy offense and you end up losing by a touchdown and a two point conversion lost mm-hmm. by eight. I mean, a one, one possession loss isn't anything to, you know, hold your head at, right. but at the same time, I feel like that game was like Tom Brady. Like, I feel like he just sent his like evil twin brother to play. And like, he Tim was he out was, there. Like, yeah, it's like Tim was out there and like it, Tom didn't even need to show up because that game was already right, so in the bag right. that they were just in literally cruise control. I also feel like they didn't want to show anything. Yeah. Because, I think I mean, and not to take anything away, well, yeah, to take anything away from Washington, yeah, because that whole division is a joke. I mean, I, I don't know what's going on down there. <laughs> it's something in the water, dude. It's something in the water, it really is. But 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 if you go five hundred in that division, you have like a comfortable three game freaking week. It's it's okay. they're throwing you a parade, all kinds of stuff. We it's... can we can we can literally have a whole show dedicated to that. the NFC. So we're gonna, yeah, the, <laughs> the NFC. So we'll we'll. We'll get back to that another day, but um, but yeah, the Bucks, the Buccaneers definitely looked good. They looked in shape. It looked like more just like a, it was like a scrimmage game almost for them, and they were just kind of going through the motions, just making sure they were staying fresh. They didn't want to give up any, you know, any other playbook really. Just kind of going through the normal, normal motions. I mean, Washington put up a fight, you know, but at the end of the day, yeah, you got to you got to give them credit though. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you, you know, you still play, you still play every week, every down, you know. Yeah, exactly. You know, at the end of the day, they made the postseason. There are how many other teams that can't say the same, right. you know? So, and like I said, it was a one-possession game. It wasn't a complete embarrassment. You had a first-time quarterback out there. You know, you held Tom Brady to, what, 31 points? 31 not, points, you know? yeah. Hey, hey, you know, it's all right. It's always next year. Work on a couple of things, you know, see what's happening. Yep. But the now. winner of that uh, Buccaneers... Washington game, which was the Bucks, they're going to be playing the winner of the Saints Bears games, yep. which was probably the the what that was the biggest snoozer of the weekend. That I definitely decided to not watch the ending half of that game. I didn't, I didn't care <laughs> after second after the second quarter. I just stopped watching it. I couldn't, yeah, I, mean, I couldn't take anymore. I mean, the best part about that game was the fact of watching it on Nickelodeon. And having the slime right. cam, that was probably right. and and the kid, right. the kid commentators were the best part of that game. I'm sorry, I did not. I, try, I completely forgot that was a Nickelodeon one. Yep. And I definitely saw some of the highlights on Twitter and all that, but um, yeah, that was definitely a snooze river game. The Snake, uh, the Saints easily rolled over the Bears. Yeah, I thought they would put up. I thought they would put up a little more points, but I mean, you know. Again, I mean, they put up a touchdown in three of the four quarters. Um, yeah. You know. Throw the ball down the field. Rubies looked like he was in good form, you know. Um, two touchdowns, 285, 65, something like that, almost 300 yards. I mean, yeah, right. he, was, he, was, he was good. He was good. They looked good. So it's going to be Breeze versus Brady for the third time this year, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they played twice in the regular season, and this is actually the first time they've played in a playoff game against each other. That is wow. Yeah, so this, this is, is their first, first their first, first time Breeze. Yep, in postseason oh. Breeze Brady. So it's yeah. gonna be it's gonna be pretty pretty crazy. And that's actually the Sunday quote unquote night game at six forty p.m. Yep. So that's gonna be a good one. That's gonna be yeah. A good that's, one. Gonna that's gonna, gonna be... end. That's gonna end the week. And yeah. what, I believe this the Saints won both matchups this year. I believe so. They have because they yeah, won the, I think they won the they, they won the first matchup thirty five to three. Yeah, because they I'm they mistaken. had the they had the tiebreaker, <clears throat> and then they won twenty thirty four twenty three. I'm just looking at it right now. So yeah. yeah, so the Saints won the first two matchups. They beat the Bucks. Right. So I know, Drew and Brees I know has the recipe. The question is, you know, is what? he going to cook up? Is he going to cook up the right the right recipe this weekend to uh you know to knock Tom Brady right out? to knock Tom Brady out? Can can uh. Mr. Infinity Gauntlet himself going to get past the Saints. Dude, I gotta say, Alvin Kamara is just a monster, too. Dude, you know what's... He's just you a know... machine. He's a machine, dude. Just give him the ball, man. Just give him the ball. I don't know how he does it either, you know? Because it's not like... It's not like he's not in... The... He... 
there's a couple co running backs that you would chalk up there as being the all purpose backs, right? Alvin Kamara, Christian McCaffrey. And when you give Alvin Kamara the ball, stuff happens, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I mean, Drew Brees is the center of that offense. And right. with the weapons that they've put in place for him, there's, there's no reason the Saints can't beat the Bucks again and <coughs> easily advance to the championship game, easily. Right. <coughs> now, with that being said, I'm picking the Buccaneers to win <coughs> against the Saints because I feel like you can beat Tom Brady twice, but there's n Tom Brady in the postseason, a whole different monster. Right. Whole different, whole different yeah. monster. Um, I'm actually picking the Bucks as well. I think the Bucks will beat the Saints. Um, I I just been questioning a lot of the Saints defense. You know, I don't think they're the same defense that was playing at the beginning of the year, towards the middle of the year. And here's the one constant that you can always get when you're playing the Bucks and the Saints is Lattimore does not like Evans <laughs> at yeah. all, at yeah. all. So to see yeah. those two, to see yeah. those two, if, if Evans is healthy and he's out there on the field, to see those two play again is going to be, that's what I'm going to be focusing in on a lot because, you know, both of them are key staples, you know, focal to, to points on the, the yeah, yeah, of their, yeah. of their teams, you know, so and it's going to be interesting. How, to, see how, to see how chirpy it gets and to see if these refs are going to like, you know, let it go. Exactly. Early and, you know, like, are you going to put an end to it early? Is are they going to address it early? Yeah. Because you know what, if we're talking about it on this podcast here, then you know damn well the referees in that game know about right, it too. Right, right, right. So, you know, if you're a head coach, are you talking to your uh, – I mean, are, are you telling your player, look, hey, don't buy into it, you know? Right. Or are you saying, hey, just roll with the punches and whatever happens, happens type thing, you know? You, you know, I mean, what are you doing if you're Sean Payton and you're – um, Brazarians. Brazarians, yeah. Yeah. What are you, what are, what are you telling them? Are, are you telling them to try to – to try to bring it out of one another? You know, no, I'm, I'm literally to, to, telling to, them, to, like... To poke the bear? No, no, no. I'm not, because we know the Saints have trouble with the refs, right? They've been, you know, mm -hmm. infamous no, pass the interference call. Home, the they are, are at home. home. They are at home. But I think, truthfully, I think Mar uh, Lattimore will probably be the one that's covering Evans. And I think Lattimore is going to be chirpy to Evans. And it's whether or not yeah. Evans responds to it, you know. Now, who do you think's gonna take a shot at who? Like, um, what quarterback do you think's gonna um take a shot first? Who do you think's who do you think's gonna draw first blood, so to say? Mm. Who do you think's gonna draw first blood? Do you think it's gonna be you know it it just comes down to who gets possession first, where it's gonna be literally that type of a shootout to where both defenses aren't good enough to stop. The yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be a shootout. Be, okay, yeah. Bruce gets, Breeze gets the ball first. They're going to go down and score more than likely. Yeah. And then, so you think it's going to be a high-scoring game. You're thinking like a like a 38-28 type, you know, 38-31 I was, type I stuff. was thinking maybe a 28-31 type of game. Okay. That's what I was thinking, you know? Okay. Maybe even a... But you're taking the Buccaneers, right? Yeah, I have the Bucks. I have the Bucks taking okay. this game. I have the Bucks okay. taking this. Yeah, who I, that I, nation? I who that nation is is going home after yeah. this week? I definitely think the Bucks are going to pull it off, and I definitely think we're going to be seeing them potentially in the Super Bowl. Oh, they, 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 Brady might literally be. I mean, he already is the goat, but he might right. be. You know, I don't even know what surpasses goat. I don't even know. I, I, I have an acronym right now. So I someone, don't even. Someone, I can't even think of the names name. that are going to be thrown out there if he does win another Super Bowl. I, I don't so even want to fathom one, it. The other, the other matchup this week, and we kind of got to circle back to this because we addressed this game earlier. Uh, right. The Rams, the Rams and the Seahawks played. Seahawks lost. No surprise there. Yeah. Chuck Artis. Uh, it's going to be the Rams and the Packers in Green Bay. In Green That's Bay, be the first game. Yes. Saturday. Mm -hmm. My my thing is is can the Rams handle the cold at Lambeau? Of course, there'll probably be no fans, you know, like it's been throughout half the year. But can do you think the Rams can handle? Because not only do they have to go and play Aaron Rodgers 
and of course you have Adams going against Ramsey, but you mm-hmm. know this is this is this is basically Aaron Rodgers' backyard. You know he's he played there what his last twelve years, so he knows yeah. how it is there. The Rams, mm-hmm. you know, Sunny SoCal. Now, yeah, yeah. Now, mind you, you know it's not like these these players from the Rams are all born and raised in SoCal and right. never experienced cold before. Right. They're drafted from all over. They're, they come in. Some of these guys are from you know Wisconsin, probably or whatever. Right. You know, north and all that so some of them i get what you're saying though being in you know acclimated to that nice sunny weather and you know yeah 78 and sunshine all the time it's it's a little bit different playing in the cold weather but you know i think the packers are going to win i think aaron Rodgers is just aaron Rodgers, and again like you said home field advantage home field advantage yeah. although it's no it's there there's no fans there lambo is right. still lambo i mean although the fans play a factor in home field advantage of lambo i think it's just part of it is the mystique of lambo yeah. is like the all of just playing there to where you're almost you know if you're not used to that atmosphere then it, it's it's a lot to take in you know yeah. you're like holy shit i'm playing I mean- yeah, Playing legends. Football at legends Lambeau Field, played there. you know. Yeah, like this is this isn't you know some yeah. new stadium, you know, in Dallas or whatever, where they just throw money at stuff mm-hmm. and try to win win playoff games. Hopefully, like Dallas does, you know. They they you know there's there's history, there's championships there, there's yep. pride, you know. So yeah, I mean it's going to be interesting to see. Yeah. Um, of course, I have the Packers taking the Rams. Yeah. As a Cowboys Thank fan, you. we've been knocked out of the playoffs so many times by Aaron Rodgers. The mystique, the lure, the just Aaron Rodgers effect. You know, there's something about this guy that he just he plays differently when he's in the playoffs. You know, mm-hmm. where I've seen him scramble. It was hey, it happened against us. He scrambled off to the left, broke a tackle, heaved it up, somehow find the t- found the tight end, and we went home. You know, dude, he gets those. It's, yeah, it's, it's like his commercial, man. He mm-hmm. gets those Rogers, those, those Roger Rogers rates. Yeah, man, he just he just but, locks it in, man. Yeah, it's. I think but that's yeah. gonna be a good game. I'm excited to see Ramsey against. <sighs> I think it's. I think I want to see Ramsey against Adams. You know. Mm-hmm. But I personally think the Packers just have too much. They have too much firepower on that offensive side for the Rams. Okay. You know. So then the last game, which is the technically the first game of Sunday and the third game in the playoff, but the last game that we're going to talk about is the Browns at the Chiefs. That's going to be the first game Sunday again at 3 right. o'clock. So the Browns coming off that ridiculous win against right, the Steelers right. last now, night. Um, that game? <laughs> where do you even start to unpack that? I, I have no I, idea. I Did you? Yeah. Dude, we, I, I wasn't even watching the game, right? I forgot the game was actually on. Mm-hmm. And then someone hit me up. They're like, dude, what is going on with this Browns Steelers game? And I was like, what do you I mean? I think that was me. I think I texted you. Yeah. And and I was like, what's going on right now? <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And then I went and looked it up. I went and started watching the game. And it was like the Browns were up 21 to zero in the first quarter. And there was still two, almost two minutes left in the quarter, you know? And I was just yeah. like, what? is going on and i mean that's what happened to me because the game was about to start and i was like oh okay crap they're about to do kickoff let me run up you know grab a little right. snack and a soda settle in watch some you know good football game you know because i had the browns winning this coming into this i didn't right. think the steelers i think the steelers were a fraud team all year they were the worst 11-0 team to ever set foot on a professional football team um you know i think they got exposed the second half of the season and once they got exposed, Juju was too busy learning TikTok, TikTok dances dance. and learning how to properly run routes. I mean, right. granted, granted, Juju did have a great game. He did have yeah. a great game. He, and, and, and you know why he had a great game? Because he stopped worrying about dancing in the middle of the fucking field mm-hmm. worrying about playing football. I think he had like 12 or 13 catches for like, I think he had like a little over 150 yards, 155 yeah. yards, something like that. And a touchdown, he, I he, think. But... Yeah, 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 yeah. He had a touchdown. He, he, he went off, had a solid game. Those are the games we need from Juju. But yeah. You know, the first play of the game, center snaps the ball over Ben Roethlisberger's head, goes back into the end zone, Browns recover. I think um, I think you have a clip of yeah, that. Yeah, I have a clip uh, of that. We'll go to that. Yeah, the, let's go to that the, right now. The, like, like, look at this. How does this even happen? Oh, no. In rushing. Six seconds. Well, they start with a horrible snap all the way back to the two-yard line, and the Browns bounce it into the end zone where they wind up with a touchdown. And then, and then who's... Uh, 
um who was that that James was connor who, connor Con who, like who, yeah how do both of you not you, recover you, the fumble how do you both of you not get yeah. on that ball just fall on it. I mean, you know? at worst, worst, at worst times, at worst, take the safety or something. Mm -hmm. Kick it out of the back of the end zone. Do yeah, something with it. You do know, something. But um, your offense, you're paid for your hands. Mm -hmm. But yeah. But again, that was a fail on multiple yeah. levels. Started by the center. Banner. And I yep. think I think that was a huge indicator of how that whole night was going to go for the right. Steelers. Because I think the possession after that. Ralph was murdered through that interception. Through that interception, yep. And it was and then, and then Mayfield took the team down, scored a touchdown. Yep. I mean it I was think, it was fourteen nothing. Yeah. I think Kareem Hunt five minutes of the game. Kareem Hunt had what, two rushing touchdowns in that first quarter? I believe so. And they I were they so. were you know, they were beast of a beast runs too. I mean he was he was dragging dudes. End of the first quarter it was twenty eight nothing. Right. And I mean I mean, I don't think most people had the Brown score in twenty eight points total in the game. And they put that up in the first quarter. Now, after the first quarter, though, Brown started to kind of sizzle down a little bit. Right. And I don't know. I was watching the game, and I really couldn't figure out if that was attributed to the Browns kind of taking their foot off, the, off gas the gas a little bit. Yeah. Or if Pittsburgh kind of figured things out and started to, you know, get kind of got in their back. groove. Yeah. Yeah, and got in their groove or whatever. Because after that first quarter, Browns only, the final score was 48-37. So Browns ended up winning comfortably, you know, 15, uh, or not 15, uh, 11 points. 11 points, yeah. You know, so it was, it, it, was, it was a comfortable win, nothing to be, you know, too scared by. But if you take away the three turnovers that literally led to 21 points, that the Steelers right. literally gift-wrapped, the Steelers literally gift-wrapped the Browns 21 points. I mean, you take that away from the Browns, they're only putting up 27 points. They lose that game by 10 because yeah. – the rest of the game, the second, third, and fourth quarter, they put up a total of twenty points. In the second, third, and fourth quarter, the Browns put up or the Steelers put up thirty-seven points. Yeah. They definitely found their groove and exposed the Browns. The Browns were getting exposed. I mean, and granted, this could have been the Browns just giving up those little six, seven yard crossing routes because right. that's where Juju was going off and all that. Um Yeah, I mean, I I I, I don't know. But carrying that into that, um, you know, the Browns easily easily beating the Steelers because Steelers just kind of gave it to them. I mean, yeah, I, I really Big did. Ben is Big Ben done in Pittsburgh? Does he come back for another year? Uh, truthfully, I don't know. I know Marquise Pouncey was, I think he said he was retiring. He was talking about retiring. So, yeah. I mean, if you're Big Ben, he did release a statement saying that he hopes that the Steelers want him back. What's you his know? contract situation? Do you know? Offhand? I do not know. I do not know offhand. Okay. I could I'm not tell you. That. Yeah, I could not tell you. <clears throat> but, I mean, if you're the Steelers, do you go after another quarterback? Knowing, I mean... They like, have, I mean, they have what's-his-name, don't they? Uh, who did they play um, the other week? Uh, Mason Rudolph? Yeah, Mason yeah. Rudolph. Josh yeah. Dobbs, Roethlisberger, Mason Rudolph. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I mean, yeah, is Mason Rudolph your future really, though? True. I mean, you know. I don't so, know. But, you know, with that being said, the Browns dispatched the Steelers, and now they have the unfortunate luck what do of... What you mean, unfortunate luck? Listen, okay, they got to get they gotta go and play Kansas City at, Can at Arrowhead Stadium, right? And there's no fans. Or, I mean, if there are going to be fans, it's going to be a very limited amount. True. Home true, field advantage true. is almost taken out of the equation, I feel like, in the yeah. NFL playoffs. But, I mean, here's the one thing I think the Browns have going for them against the Chiefs is the Chiefs have – their defense is very, very poor against the run, and I think the Browns have one of the best running games I've seen in a while, right? That two-headed monster they have between Hunt and Chubb, Chubb, yeah. I think I think that will be the difference maker if they can. With Mayfield too. Mayfield has legs too. Don't forget about Mayfield. Baker. Baker can run a little Baker, bit. Baker. Baker can run. I saw. I you know I've been watching a little it's bit more Browns games. You know. I mean. I mean. Don't get me wrong. He's no Lamar. He's oh no my Lamar. God. But you know, Baker. 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 Baker got some run to him. He does. He does. He does. I think it's going to be a close game. I think this will be another close game. Um, this is my upset of. Upset, right here. upset. Browns. You have the Browns. The Chiefs. 
Chiefs coming off, going to come off a little rusty. Browns with a bunch of momentum coming into this game. True, true. Now, I mean, granted, some of it's been Lady Luck's been on their side, but hey, I mean, what's to, I mean, what's to stop it now? There have been Cinderella runs in the past, you know. That is true. That so, is true. I mean, Browns are playing really good football. They're healthy for the most part. I didn't see right. any big injuries in this 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 past yesterday or anything. So, I mean, they're coming in healthy. Um, Chiefs, I feel like, might be a little rusty. Um, you know, not to say that they're not a well-oiled machine because that Kansas City. I mean, they are they are right, the best right. team in the NFL right now. There's there's no. Denying I can that. tell you right now, Patrick Mahomes will not do the same. They will not turn. They will not give the Browns twenty eight points. Oh no! In the first quarter, no, they're they're. I'm sure they're at practice this week, and they're going to make sure things like that won't happen. Yeah. And you know, and it's it's going to come down. I think it's going to be a close game. This is the game that I'm going to predict. I think it's going to be thirty four to twenty seven. 34 27 Browns, 34, huh? Twenty seven Browns. Thirty four twenty seven Browns. Okay. I think it's going to be a big game for Baker Mayfield. I think he's going to go off. I think he's going to show up and show out. Right. You think this is Baker's scores. game right here? You think this is? This is, this is Baker's game. This yeah. is Baker's game. It's, it's going to be on be a big Cleveland. stage. It's going to be a Cleveland-Baltimore matchup in the AFC right. Championship. Dang, and it's you guys be... played each other twice, didn't you? Yeah. Ooh. Cleveland and Baltimore. Who, 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 took, those, who, took, those, who took those Who took those? games during the regular season? The Ravens did. No. I think the Browns won one and the Ravens won one. Yeah. I think you guys won the yeah, last they, one. No. We, we beat the Browns both times this year. Both times? Okay. Both time. Yeah, the, that's right. Because the first game was super close. 40, I'm looking at it right now. Yeah. 47-42. It was a super close game. And then right. the most recent one, the last game of the season, we beat them 38-6. to Yeah. That was when they had none of their receivers. Yeah. Oh, no. I'm sorry. That was... I'm sorry. That was the first game of the season. We beat them 38 to six. Oh, okay. Okay. And okay. then later in the season, before we went on that great, well, I mean, we've been on a, what we beat the Cowboys, Browns, Jags, Giants, Bengals coming into this postseason. So mm -hmm. we're on a heater right now. We're catching heat at the right time. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, I don't know. But... Ravens are looking good. There are a couple of really good looking teams right now. Um, the chiefs, like we like go back to the chiefs and the Browns. Um, you know, I think I really do think the Browns are going to pull it off. I think Baker Mayfield, like you were saying, their running game. It's going to be a good game, but I think the Browns are going to pull it off. Browns are going to pull it off. Me personally, I'm picking the Chiefs. I think the Chiefs win this game, and I think we have Chiefs Ravens. I think that's what is going to happen. I think that's what the universe wants to see is Chiefs Ravens yeah. in the AFC title game. Um. But of course, you know, Baker, it would be good to see Baker there too. But I just don't think, I think Patrick Mahomes has something special. And I think he's mm -hmm. going to, I think he's going to, he's going to put this team on his back and he's going to carry him into the AFC title game. And that's what I think is going to be his biggest crux is you think so? that he think, he, I don't want to say overconfidence, but I guess overconfidence is the best word to use right, to describe right. it. To where not going to come in and think he's going to take it too lighthearted, but you know he's going to be looking, you know, like okay, it's the Cleveland Browns, we're the Kansas City Chiefs, we're defending champs, we're you know, we're hot shit. This is yeah. going to be nothing to us, you know what I mean? And right. they're going to be surprised, you know. And it's one of those things where you know I think Tyson is the one who's quoted as saying this. Uh, you know, everyone has a plan to like a punch in the mouth. Right. And I think the Chiefs are going to come in there and realize that this Browns team is pissed off. They just tasted I, their first playoff win in, you know, how many years? Since 94, 96 or something, right. you know, 25, 26 years. They got that first taste and they're hungry, you know? The I Chiefs need to correct sitting... myself. Uh huh. I picked the Bills to win against the Ravens. So it's Chiefs Bills in the AFC title game. Okay. I needed Damn. to correct that. So, yeah. I'm actually really upset you correct because I actually mentally noted that. And uh -huh. I'm gonna hold that hold that against you. Yep, yep. So I was gonna be like, oh really? Okay. Yep, Bills. Both Bills. Sides of the table here. Yeah, so, nope. I'm okay. I'm going Bills. I, Bills Mafia, baby. Bills but Mafia. Since we've since we've talked so much about my team, I heard your team had some big news today. You guys uh made a made yeah, a big we have, move, didn't you? Yep. In uh Jerry World we have uh, a new defensive coordinator. For those Dan of you Quinn. that uh, haven't caught on yet, Jeff is a Dallas Cowboys fan. And I am. I, I am. constantly give him crap for it. He does. He does. He does. But, uh, yeah, good one. You were saying uh, you guys made a big move. To yeah, so defensive as a coordinator? defensive coordinator, we picked up Dan Quinn, was the head coach of the Falcons this year, got fired. 
Got picked up by Dallas. He's now the defensive coordinator there. So I mean, picking up the scraps. I love yeah, it. I love it. You know, just I th- raking it in. Just it's... raking it in. Just come on. Come on. Am I happy Cowboys. with the pick? Am I happy with the pick? Do I think he's better than Nolan? Yes. Um, do I think he was the best possible defensive coordinator out there? I don't know. I have to see. I have to see what I guess the beginning of the season looks like. You know because. We're losing some defensive players, mm-hmm. and you know I want to see what he Dak does. Coming back off an injury too. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I don't want to jinx um, anything, but yeah. And speaking of getting fired, uh, Eagles lost their head coach today. Doug Peterson, they did, right? Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson. Doug Peterson got so, fired as well. Does that mean Carson Wentz is back in Philly, or does he still want to see you know test the I, waters, cast the line, see what's out there? I think he stays in Philly. I think that's the you whole reason. Really? Yeah, I think that's the, because he came out and really? said. You think? I think, I think he stays Peterson in Philly. Was the sole reason? I do because Wentz said he said if Peterson is the coach, he may look for possible other teams to go to. But, you know. I remember when you and I were talking earlier today, we were mentioning that uh, you had told me Ian Rappaport mentioned that um, one of the reasons uh, Peterson was leaving was because he was tired of getting told what to do by everybody. So right. does that mean Philly's just looking for some type of puppet to put at the head coach position just to get, you know, the team ran by Carson Wentz or whoever? He wants to be? I don't I mean, you know what? Truthfully, what, I mean. I feel like you need to have someone to take control of the locker room. You can't right. let the players run the team. You need to have someone. I don't think. Put- Here's my thing with the whole Carson Wentz situation, right? I personally don't think Carson Wentz is that good of a quarterback. He's lost a step. I think he's afraid of being injured again, right? Mm-hmm. And being in Philly, I think, is really bad for him. Okay? Um, now, with the Doug Peterson thing is, I think what happens here is Peterson benched him. We all saw it. Jalen Hurts was playing the last, what, four or five games of the season? Last game, all of a sudden, Hurts gets benched, and they bring in the third-string quarterback, right? Yeah. So I think, truthfully, I think it had nothing to do with Wentz, per se, like Wentz getting Doug Peterson fired. It was the fact that Doug Peterson wanted to run the team, and I'm thinking the higher-ups wanted them to put back in Wentz because they have a $100 million quarterback sitting there on the bench, you know? So you think Doug Peterson wanted to make moves? And the management, I mean, not make moves per se and as into like trades and big shuffles right. and all that stuff. Yeah, but, no. You know, as, to po- as to deciding who should start and what forth and whatnot. And the higher ups were like, no, we're paying this guy to start. So that's that's starting. my personal, yeah, that's my okay. personal opinion. Okay. Yeah. Is it 100% accurate? I don't know, so but that's what do you I think. think. Doug Peterson is going to find work in the NFL now? Oh, 100% he'll find work in the NFL. Yeah. I mean, look at the, what the Chargers are looking for. Own. Yeah, the Chargers are looking for They'll a find coach. Some coordinator you know, position at, at at worst, some coordinator position somewhere. Or something. Right, right. And oh, you know, fucking Cowboys. The Cowboys might fucking rake them in for something. Shit, get rid of Mike McCarthy. Let's go. Put him as a scout or whatever. You know, <laughs> just scout. to get some insider knowledge on right, the Eagles. Right, right, right. But yeah, because so apparently, because 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 apparently, whatever head coach they're bringing in is just going to get you know told what to do anyway. So. I mean, it would be no different than Peterson probably when he, already has a playbook. I mean, but to be fair, if he went to Dallas, it's the same thing over there in Dallas. You know, Jerry out there is going to tell but yeah, Peterson I think, what to I also do, think too. It's going to be an interesting offseason. I haven't looked. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a good draft. Uh, it's going to be an interesting offseason. Uh, <coughs> a lot of good a lot of good playoff football games coming up. Uh, there is. There is. This weekend. Um, yeah. I don't know. Um, did you, you didn't catch any of the PGA stuff, did you? I did you're not, not. You're not I, You're not that big of a big golf I guy. mean, I, I watch it occasionally. You know, it was a it was a big weekend. I don't want to say a big weekend. Uh, it was the first uh, PGA event of 20, 2021. Uh, right. Not of the season. Season. The right. Season but it was technically started the new year. You know, of the first the event of the new year. Yeah. yeah. They were in Hawaii. God, it, let me tell you. I'm it, that it that was, course is beautiful. It was so it was so God. It sucks watching them just because I'm I'm a big golfer, as you know. Right. And I live in Baltimore, so it's currently been probably around. 35 degrees 40 degrees average here yeah so i've been playing golf every saturday morning for you know all for the past year plus more and uh it's been you know the past couple of months it's been around probably 30 35 degrees average tee off time these guys are here in hawaii these beautiful drops and i'm just oh my god nice little breeze you know but gentleman named harris english shot a 25 under for wow. the weekend 
Wow. A 65, 67, 66, and a 69. Nice to uh, to tr- end him, uh, net him $1.3 million. Right. So he so won. He won the bad... He won the weekend, right? Yeah. The tournament of, is, dude, it was called the Tournament of Champions, deal. correct? Yeah, yeah. It was a Century Tournament of Champions. So basically, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a limited field. So there were only 41 participants in this, actually. So it's weird. It's like your typical PGA Tour event because your typical PGA Tour event, you're used to like 120 people. Right, right, right. You play Thursday, Friday, you make a cut, and then there's, you know, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it just like whittles down more and more Whatever. and more. This was Tournament of Champions. So these are past winners and all this stuff. And yeah. with COVID and everything, it was like a limited field, limited invited. So it was kind of like, I don't want to say there was an asterisk by it, but I mean, I could see how some people might make the argument for it, but right. screw them. It was a solid win. Harris English was hitting the ball amazing all weekend, played phenomenal golf out of this world, held off, you know, Justin Thomas, Xander Shopley, Bryson DeChambeau, John Rahm. There were a bunch of people chasing him up the leaderboard, but he, you know, he held his nerve. Um, he actually, uh, a young kid by the name of Joaquin Neiman. Right. Kid, tw- 22, Jeff, 22. 22 out there. He was looking I mean, for a second PGA Tour win. Um they actually ended up tying at 25 under. So they really? forced the playoff. So for those of you that aren't too familiar with golf and all that, after you play um, the 72 holes of golf, if there's a tie, you play a playoff hole. Yeah. So you, you know, you finish up, you play a playoff hole and it was, you know, Harris English and Joaquin were tied. So they played a playoff hole and uh, Harris English ended up winning the playoff hole. So he ended wow. up winning. Right. Uh, wh- Joaquin Neiman ended up uh, raking in seven hundred eighty-two thousand dollars. That's not bad for a award. weekend. Yeah, that's not bad for no, a four-day it's weekend. It's not bad for four days to go to you know Hawaii. Go to, <laughs> go to Hawaii. Yeah. Play a play a golfer a round of golf for four days, and uh, I'll send you a check for seven hundred eighty-two thousand dollars. Yeah, man. Doesn't sound too bad. Um, I'm definitely not boy, a golfer. <clears throat> uh, aside from Harris English winning his first uh, playoff. Uh, are winning his first uh, his first tournament, tournament since 2013. By the way, too, yep. 2013, a little yep. over seven years since he last won. Talk about yeah. a grinder. I know, Talk right? About a grinder. I think he had a couple of top five finishes in that time, but could never, you know, really seal the deal. But um, yeah, he was hitting it well. Uh, ter- another tournament starts there in Hawaii again this week. Starts Thursday. It's the Sony Open in, at a uh, Wile Country Club Ooh. in Honolulu. So uh. Yeah, maybe in a couple of years you'll see me out there, you know, not yeah. with these boys, but um, picking up their towels, maybe. Yeah, um, my boy Justin Thomas, uh, one of my favorite players. He yeah, finished, uh, he finished second, or well, I guess technically third, since uh, right. Joaquin and Justin they tied. They tied uh, twenty four under. Had a chance to push it to go to the playoff, but missed his eagle putt. Uh, yeah, ended up only a birdie. Um, he also made headlines this weekend. He did. Things, he other, did. And his golf. And swings, they were not um, very good headlines. No, after missing a putt on one of the holes that just barely missed and lipped out, he was yep. quoted uh, calling himself a uh, expletive that is not looked upon nicely in the right. LGBTQ community. Right. Uh, it starts with an F, and I'll let you guys kind of fill in the rest of that if you haven't yep. uh, already. I'm sure if you just quick little Google search, you'll can find out exactly what we're talking about. Right. But, right. Um, it sh- it I really know, I, should I be. I wanted to get your, uh, I kind of wanted to get your take on this, Jeff, considering, uh, I don't know if many of you know, but Jeff has, you know, one arm and he is, you know, a disabled man himself. So yep. he's part of, you know, a minority community in a sense. And I am, uh, I am. I think the concerning thing for me, and I'm going to give you the mic here in a second to give me your thoughts, but, uh, you know, me being a golfer, when I hit a bad shot or have something bad, I say plenty of expletives that are, nowhere near nice or could right. be repeated in front of my mother but none of them <laughs> appear to be uh you know racist or right. homophobic and i guess the concerning thing is why was that on his tip of the tongue you know exactly why that f word and not the other f word or something yeah. else and um i guess i'll let you uh give me your two cents on it you know truthfully like like you said earlier i don't follow much golf um i'm i'm getting into it i can name a few players here and there but he like you said how is that one word the one yeah. word that That's you the, take yeah. and then knowing that there's cameras there's microphones and all that around and you know saying it like i understand heat of the moment you're uh-huh. angry with yourself you know there's there's no people there watching but you don't have that mm-hmm. crowd background noise 
you know so it's just going to be amplified even more and it was such a beautiful day you mm-hmm. know and i mean that is a good point you brought up though because uh he he's well aware because this isn't like uh covid just started you know two right. weeks ago and it's just now that you know there's yeah. no fans there it's they played like all of last off. year it's, almost. It's, it's, they played all of last year to where yeah. he knows that microphones are picking up everything. Everything you can hear. Every, you can hear everything now, yeah. there, of course, you know. Um, and, of course, with him being at the top of the leaderboard, him I being mean, what, he's what, third in, he is, he's ranked third in the world, right? Third, third in, in the world. world. Yeah, so, the, so the cameras, the mics are all going to be pointed oh, at you. Yeah. You have an image. Yeah. Now, let me ask you a doing. question. Mm-hmm. He did come out, Shit. and mind you, I this was the part that I do find like he did in good faith, good taste was he didn't go into the locker rooms, he didn't mm-hmm. dodge, he came out right after it happened and he issued his apology, he talked to the media, he released a statement and all that stuff. My question to you is as being a fan, a golfer and all that, are you yeah. fine with just his apology? At the mo, at the moment, yes, I'll say yes, because I don't expect you to do something like that. Then, all of a sudden, within forty eight hours, you know, you right. completely, you know, just written some check, went on TV and said you're sorry, and then you try to sweep it under the rug. I feel like actions speak louder than words. Right. And I feel like, you know, he's twenty seven, twenty eight years old, he's still a young guy in the grand yeah. scheme of things. He still has a lot to learn and all that stuff. Um, you know, not excusing his actions by any means. Twenty seven, so old enough to know the difference right. between what you should and shouldn't. Yeah, say. exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, you have younger you have younger people on tour who act more professional at times. Um, but you know, but then again, Justin Thomas again been on the tour for a long time has right. never had an incident like this before. Maybe a couple of other little temper tantrumy kind of things, but you know, nothing to this degree or magnitude. Right, right, right. Um, at the time, just like how you said, you know, it's not like he hid from the cameras or hid or dodged the questions or anything. You know, when asked about it and everything like that, he addressed it. He owned up to it. You know said he was sorry yeah um, i think the next couple of weeks will be telling to see right, what happens right, right, right. um not to say he needs to make sure he has a pr stunt you know in front of something or something like that right but, you know i think he should be fined by the pga yeah um i think he should match whatever he's fined plus a little bit and make a charitable donation somewhere or something like that yeah. and i think he himself should look into doing something more hands on y or more inclusive in the community just to kind of, you know, be a little more aware of what's, you know, the hot topic or hot word at the right, moment. Right. Because um, do I think he said it in malice towards that community? No. 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 Um, I don't You know, that. I won't sit here and tell lies. I've said that word before because growing up when I was a kid, it was, you know, one of those words that was just kind of thrown around with no repercussions. Right. But as right. I got older, I've kind of learned, you know, yeah. That's offensive to a certain community, so I don't use that word anymore. Um, but, you know, when you're 13, 14, you know, yeah, I mean, things like that don't really matter. Yeah. Um, it was also a different time back then. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, I think it's going to be telling the next couple of weeks. Uh, I think what he did is fine for, for me now. I'm still a fan of Justin Thomas. I'm still going to root for him this week at the Sony Open. Um, right. You know, I'll be watching it. Yeah, hopefully this is a you know a good life lesson from him, um, because I'm not a huge fan of cancel culture. Just to let everybody know, I mean, me I think certain me people, either, I think know. certain people I'd... do deserve to be canceled at times for certain things. Yeah. But I think, as the most part, you know, witch hunts and stuff like that for people that have one little blemish on their record for something after you know a history of good stuff shouldn't be you know. Yeah. You no. shouldn't let you shouldn't let one little blip you know diminish. Uh, you know, a streak of a good work and all right. that stuff. Yeah. Decades of, you know, yeah, good work. Exactly. Now let me ask yeah. you a question. Do you think, because in other sports, you know, do you think the athlete uh, is looked at differently than broadcasters? Like if it was a broadcaster who said that, yep. he would have gotten fired instantly. Right. But because it was an a- he's an athlete, he's a pro. Yeah. You know, I mean, do you think, um what's your what's your take on that i don't know um athletes it's different a lot of it's heat of the moment type stuff i could see announcers 
I mean, I think it all depends. I mean, announcers, you're always taught the mic's always on. Right. You know what I mean? It's always mic's, hot. Mic's always on. It's always hot. You should never say anything that you don't want the word to, world to hear in front of the microphone. Right. It's a great life lesson for anybody listening. Don't talk into anything because mm-hmm. assume, assume they're always listening. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I you know, I, I don't know. I think if you if you ever have a chance to sit courtside at a basketball game, you're going to hear a lot of things that you don't hear on TV. <laughs> A lot of yep. things, you know, that, you know, a lot of things you happens, definitely would not hear in church. I, you know, I, I, I don't think, I mean, if we were going to get to that level, then it's, you know, you would have to have a fair playing field where it's like, okay, every player needs to be mic'd up then. And someone needs to be monitoring all mm-hmm. verbal stuff then, because if someone, you know, gets caught on, you know, cause I'm sure, I mean, I don't want to say this with, you know, full, but I'm sure that's not the first time if, if he said that word right then and there, I'm sure it's not the first time he's uttered that. Somewhere right. Involved, right. Course, you know what I mean? It just so happened that during that tournament at that time, that microphone that was, caught it. Yep. You know? Yeah. So, and I'm sure he's not the only golfer who, because if he's comfortable saying it like that on the course like that, I'm right. sure that's something that's not going to, you know, y- you know, apparently other people have heard it or whatever. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. That's, that's, a, that's a tough one to unpack there. But yeah. um, I, I think it's all situation-based. I mean, you know, I think hard racial slurs should always result in crazy penalties and all penalties, that stuff yeah. but i mean if he i mean you know it, it's hard it's hard it's hard to draw lines nowadays too because mm-hmm. it's what's you know where do you really draw the line because if that's acceptable if that, then exactly take it to mm-hmm. that to that exact end, to that you know, line like, hey. right to that line yeah it's i mean you know yeah. I just kind of, I just, I, I just kind of like to use common sense in situations like this, and I look at the context and how he used it, and if it was directed towards someone or himself. Right, and right, right. It looked like he just missed it a putt, was pissed off at itself, and it was unfortunate that that was the word that, that was the word. he chose. So, so, Mr. Thomas, please, in yeah. future, choose yeah. a different word, okay? In future, choose a different word. Choose a different and, word. I, I mean, you, yeah, I don't know. So, I noticed. You're wearing a uh, Washington Capitals this week, baby. This week, this week, right? Are you excited sadly, for the NHL? Sadly, sadly they don't play Wednesday. Uh-huh. Sadly, they don't play Wednesday. I have to wait till Thursday to watch my Capitals, but I think there are a couple of good games on Wednesday. Um, there I don't is. Know if you have a schedule I do. I do have a schedule. Throw up real quick. Um, and for those listening on Spotify, just so you guys know, real quick too, if we're still on Spotify, we are doing a video of this as well that you can catch on the Benched YouTube. Yep. So feel free to stop on over to the YouTube, subscribe, and vice versa. If you're on the YouTube watching this, this is going to be uploaded on the Spotify. So if you're watching on YouTube, you have to run, throw it on on your car on Spotify. You and can you can catch it. Buffoons. Yeah, you can catch it on Spotify, <clears throat> Benched Media. Okay. Now, so NHL is another sport that I am newly getting into, right? And so... um I mean, Wednesday, we got some pretty interesting games. We got the Penguins versus the Flyers. Can't wait. Pittsburgh Penguins against the Philadelphia Flyers. In-state yep. rivals going at it, going at it. I'm going to be a good one. Um, yeah. I'm going for the Penguins all the way. Uh, Truthfully, I would pick the Penguins too. Um, I heard, you know, growing up, heard a lot about Crosby. You know. Yep. So, kind of... I don't want to say I'm a Penguins fan, but I know a lot about the Penguins. Uh, we also have the Blackhawks and the Lightning playing as well. But that's not at eight. Before no. that are the Canadians and the Maple Leafs at seven. Right, at seven. Then we got the Blackhawks and Lightning, like you were saying, at eight. At eight. The Canucks and Oilers at ten. And the Blues and the Avalanche at 1030. And then on Thursday, the first game Thursday night is the Bruins, Bruins and, and the, the Devils. Devils. That's going to be a. So, yeah, I might watch State. that game too. The Boston Bruins against the New Jersey Devils. Yeah. So what? Let me see. So Jeff, you're you live in SoCal. Yes. But you're a, but you're a LA Dodgers fan and a Dallas Dodgers Cowboys fan, fan, a Cowboys so we fan. Find a hockey team. I got to find a hockey team. I need to find a hockey team. That is my goal yeah. to have a hockey so, team that I can root for by the middle of the year. Montreal, Toronto, Houston. Chicago, Tampa Bay. And the funny thing is I, I have oh, no uh, ties yeah. to California, oh, you know, so it could be any team, right? Yeah, I guess oh, I'm just going to have to, I guess I'm just going to have to sit and watch some games, see some players. I can't Capitals, root for baby. Capitals because it's your team. I cannot Capitals, in good faith baby. root for the Capitals because it's your team. Okay. Okay. Because yes. then 
I can make you know, fun of you when they lose. If that's how it is, dude. Uh, you know, if that's how it is. I mean, you could always root for our like rivals, the Bruins, like the Bruins and the Penguins are our rivals. Yeah. I don't could know. I mean so what? Yeah. I mean I don't know. Who would you who would you really root for then? Like the Kings, I'm, the LA Kings, the LA Kings. You know, Anaheim um, Ducks, the Ducks. I always did love the whole Mighty Ducks movie. So you yeah. know, I'm kind of. I knew a lot be about a the Ducks. Fan, I, you know, be I could Ducks be a fan. Ducks fan, you know. Be a Ducks fan. Quack, quack, dude. Quack, Fucking quack, weird, baby. I'm a, I'm a old Oregon Ducks fan. Mm. Might as well be a Ducks fan for hockey. You know, it's it's all the same thing, you know. So, yeah, so we'll see how the hockey plays out throughout the year. Um, again, um, I don't know if there are any other topics you really want to hit on, Jeff. I think we covered the big NFL, uh, the PGA drama. Yep. Um, gave a little NHL preview. We're both kind of noobs on that. Um, yeah. Kind of seeing how the season plays out. Looking forward to that. NBA, same kind of thing. Same thing with NBA. I'm 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 so wrapped up in you know yeah NFL and PGA and stuff right now. Once the NBA gets going a little bit more, I'll probably dive into that. But, right. Um, yeah. Baseball off season. Not much. You know, I can't wait for baseball. Trades, I cannot but, wait for baseball. The trades have been yeah. crazy. There been Man. a couple good ones. Yeah. Maybe as a we'll Dodgers some, fan, uh, as a Dodgers fan, I am not happy with the trades that the Padres have been doing because that just makes them a little bit better and they're in my division and you know, they're kind of, right. yeah, right. I mean, you know, Yankees coming in strong this year. So that's all that matters. The who? The Yankees. The who? Uh. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, just wanted to say thank you guys for listening to us two idiots ramble on for uh, almost an hour now. Almost wow, an hour, that. yeah, man. Wow, all right. So yeah, wow, dude. Uh, good first episode. Uh, it really thank was. You for uh, you know, thank you for having me, Jeff. I mean, uh, my pleasure, my pleasure. Co-host, I appreciate you know letting yep. me uh, ramble on with you for an hour. Um, I'm sure this will get polished up a little bit more, guys, as we go along. So uh, enjoy the ride. Um, and yeah, Jeff, I'll let you sign it off. I just want to give everyone a shout out and tell you guys thank you for taking the time to listen to us be idiots for about an hour. I really do. <laughs> I apologize for all of it. But um, yeah, so this is Benched. We're going to try and put out an episode every week. So like Nick said earlier, if you, you can catch this on YouTube at Benched. And you can also catch it on Spotify if you look up Benched Media. So, yeah. Throw us a follow. Much it. For, Throw us a uh, follow. Make sure you guys. Being here. Yeah, make sure you guys, you know, tell your friends about it. Let's go, Ravens. <laughs> Let's go, Bills. Um, also. <laughs> what a joke. What a joke. <laughs> Dude, Bills Can't Mafia, baby. Guy. Bills Mafia. But, uh, so, yeah. It was that's fun. What, that's what it was our that's pleasure. What, that's what Cowboys fans do, uh, do best in the postseason root against their friends' teams. It gives us joy. It gives us joy since we have so much heartbreak. You know what? We should leave each podcast with a fun fact. Okay. Go ahead. I'll let you start. For the first, the fun fact for the first podcast. Go ahead. Yeah. Is since the start of all major social media, like your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, there has never been a Cowboys playoff victory post on any of those networks. Yeah. Oh, so, you know, huh? yep, yeah, yeah, pretty interesting. No Cowboys fan has ever got to say congratulations for winning a playoff game. Yeah, no one, no one has ever, no Cowboys fan has ever sent a playoff. It's gonna change. Tweet. It's gonna change. I dude, see. 20, dude, see 20, the future. 2036, You guys are looking good, man. You guys are looking yeah, good. By the time yeah. Jerry dies, yeah, he'll be good. But all right, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, have a great really appreciate morning, it. afternoon, evening, whenever you're listening. Peace. Y'all take it easy. We love y'all. Peace.